have any rights over the wife? So does the husband, does the zawj have any haq over the zawja? Yeah. yeah? Does the zawja, the wife, have any haq over the zawj? Who has more rights? The, z- the husband over the wife or the wife over the husband? Bain bain? Same same? Saba? Correct. So, absolutely correct. And I want to share with you a few points. So, the Quran and Islam has made responsibility between the husband and the wife. There is responsibility between the husband and the wife. And, for example, in the Quran, Allah talks about, and I refer you to um, the verse of the Quran, Allah says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِلَا عَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِيْتَاءِ ذَا الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغِي يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ in, that, in, in the 14th juz, in the 14th chapter of the Quran, this verse is there. And in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah orders you. Allah orders you to be just. And subhanallah, Allah blessed the ulama. But what, in, what, is, what does Allah mean by adl? What does Allah mean by, by just? And under that verse, if you open the books of Tafsir, the commentary of the Quran, you will find you know, volumes written about the rights and responsibilities of an individual with Allah, Allah's rights over us, in a rights a person has over their husband, a man has over her, his wife, the wife over the husband, the rights of the children, everything is broken down. Subhanallah, even to the extent, what is our rights over the angels and what's the rights of the angels over us? Um, again, this I have talked about it in some detail. Um, and I intend to actually... Um, discuss some of those points in some of my Jummah talks at a later time. But I've talked about this some in great detail. And for yourself, your reference is available um, in the um, commentary of the Noble Quran. I refer to a simple English translation written by, and is originally in Arabic. For those of you who read Arabic, you will re- I refer you to the original source, the Tafsir of Imam Ibn Kathir, Rahimahullah. And in English, it's all available. The Tafsir of Ibn Kathir is translated into English, and you'll be able to easily get hold of it. So the Quran says, but regarding the wife, Hunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lahun. That they are a cover screen for you. And the men are a, a, a cover for the women. This verse of the Quran vividly explains the bond, the union. And this is my words. The bond, the unique bond, the unique union between the husband and the wife. And... Subhanallah, when Allah says, Hunna libasul lakum wa antum libasul lahun. That they, the women, are, or the wife is the garment for you, and you are the garment for the, for the wife. How can, no, let's take another example of this, of, of a sort of a literal understanding. For those of you, I'd refer to the men, if you, your t shirt, or your underclothing, it's very personal to you. It's very personal to you. And you know, you will you know, wear underclothing that's comfortable to yourself. You will deal with it in a comfortable manner that you feel comfortable with. But the Quran, when it stipulates the word libas, hunna libasul lakum ma antum libasul lahun, it is referring to that most um, sensitive part of your clothing. So what, I'm ref- what it refers to here is that thing which is the most closest to you, the most sensitive, the most private. And Allah says, that the wife is the most private for the husband, and the husband is the most pri- private for the wife. But my, th- I, I would say is, how is that possible when there's no relationship, there's no bond, there's no connectivity? It's just a ritual relationship. He works, she works, they have no me time, and there's no, there's no relationship. But how do you expect to be the garment and the loved one for one another? I would say it's not possible. So you have to build that relationship. You have to come together, and if the h- wife is scared of the husband, that is not a healthy relationship. If the, on the other hand, if the husband is scared of the wife, that's also not a healthy relationship. They need to be transparent, open. And they should, the husband should be able to feel completely comfortable to say with respect to his wife whatever he wishes. And the hus- wife should be completely free with the husband. And this was, subhanAllah, what we learn from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Quran says, لَقَدَ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا That surely in the example of Rasulullah is the best of examples for you. Now, time is short, but you can look at so many examples. Let me just tell you the example of Aisha radiallahu anha and the noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
Yes, they were husband and wife, but subhanAllah, they were best of friends. They were best of friends. And if you look at their life, Aisha radiallahu anha, she, no, she would be able to freely say to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what she wanted to. Freely. No, you know, there was no barrier. She would, she would freely say what she wanted to. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah, he would deal with her with love and respect. If, you know, they say that, you know, there's a very, very famous saying in English that you can't demand respect. You have to earn respect. Yeah? What did I just say? You, you can't demand respect. You can't say, well, I'm the husband. Or I'm the wife, I want the respect. It doesn't come like that. You can't demand the respect, you have to earn it. And how do you earn it? So if you are hospitable, you are respectable, you're respectful, you are honorable to one another, then naturally Allah blossoms the heart and you become loved to one another. And naturally, if the wife is honorable, respectful and, you know, um, praiseworthy of her husband and the husband is the same with her wife, with the wife, then both of them will have that um, love and respect with one another. So it's very, very important to understand this human psychology. But if you just think that, no, this is what the Quran says. You know, and you give the verse of the Quran. Oh, with respect, nobody cares. You may be the most practicing person, so what? It's just black and white text that you're just rutting off. It's about human psychology. You understand how the brain works, how one another work. And then you'll be able to, inshallah, be able to learn and be able to you know, live with one another in harmony. So, True consideration is done with leniency, with raham, with respect and with leniency. And distance appears when there is neglect, there is harshness and arrogance in a relationship. These things, what happens is it removes the respect and the love that can blossom in a marriage. So what has the Quranic terms and the hadith mentioned with regards to the rights? So let's look at some of the three th things I want to talk about. First of all, the rights of the husband over the wife. There are three things I want to quickly mention. Islamically speaking, and I've mentioned this last week. The rights of the husband over the wife. So in other words, what the wife expects from the husband is as follows. Number one, he needs to provide the bread. He needs to bring food on the table. Yeah. So he has to make sure that there is food available in the house. So the food can be prepared. Or, but as, there must be food available and food given to the wife from the husband. Who cooks it? <laughs> That's a different issue altogether. <laughs> Who cooks it? Um, is it a God-given right that the wife cooks it? Um, I'm going to say this, as I said, I'm a bit of a traditionalist. I would say that in a happy home, the wife cooks it. <laughs> um, but also in a non-happy home, it doesn't necessarily mean the wife doesn't cook it. The both of them can cook it. Um, but what I'm you know, speaking about some of the um, human developments. It's usually um, the wife that will cook it, but it's not a religious right that the wife cooks it. And I would say work two to get together. You know, I know some individuals that they'll come home, bang on the table. It's 5.30, where's the food? Huh? Well, work it out. We'll go make it. And then, if, the, if, the, if the wife's in a bad mood, well, the kitchen's available. The fridge is there. Make it yourself. <laughs> and that's not really, really, you know, uh, it's not really helpful. I know, subhanAllah. And you know, it makes me think. I was speaking to a consultant. You know, these, you know, very, very high, well-paid, very busy jobs. And subhanAllah, she's saying, and she's just talking. And she's like, I've got to be at work at this time. I'm going to need to get home. I need to put the food on. And she was a non-Muslim lady talking. I was thinking to myself, subhanAllah, you know, if you think about it, this whole sort of human development, yes, she's got a high-flying job, but she's got it in her equation that she needs to be doing that. So just out of the sort of curiosity, I said, well, do you cook all the food? <laughs> do you make all the food? She goes, yeah, you know, that's how it is. We, that's how what I do. It's a part of my equation. I was sitting down the other day, not long ago, with a GP, a doctor, similar sort of discussions. What well, my point is that, you know, traditionally, and, you know, through the human developments, it's the... You know, in a happy home, we find the lady who prepares the food. Actually, the ladies are better cooks than men, usually. Um, but I'm not, it's not a God-given right. Work it out amongst yourselves. Last week, somebody sent me a message. said, oh, you kept on saying, work it out. Well, there must be something about whose right is what. And I would say strongly, that's the wrong mentality. If you think this is your right, khalas tilka hududullah, and this is it. That's your right. This is my right. You stay on your side. I stay on my side. You stay on your side of the bed. I stay on my side of the bed. <laughs> Doesn't work. Work it out. You know, it's mutual. It happens through compromise. 
But what Islam has said, and what the Sharia has said, feeding. Feeding the wife is the husband's responsibility. In other words, making sure there's food available. So even to the extent, and actually I'll mention this at the second point, clothing. The clothes that the wife will wear is the responsibility of the husband. He has to make sure that she wears in a decent clothing. Now, he wears, you know, top of the range, you know, um, I don't know, come on guys, some names, give me some names. SubhanAllah, brothers, come on, some hi-fi names. Um, Gucci. Hu- Gucci, Hugo Boss, eh? he can't do without, yes. Give me some top brands. Adidas. Okay, so this top brands. He wears all these top brands. And subhanAllah, the wife, he gets her, he says, so okay, well, here's the budget, prime marks your shop. <laughs> and, uh, of course, now if he wears um, a shirt from, well, in other words, whatever he, whatever um, so, so, um, status clothes he wears, he has to provide exactly the same for his wife. And that's just fair. Now, if the wife says, well, hold on, you wear your Primark. I only think of Chanel and Louis Vuitton. <laughs> That's not going to happen. He's not, but how is he going to afford it? So, you know, what, what my point is that what Sharia has said is whatever the... Um